exactly what anybody else can do too. Just so you can see whether or not, like, or how to find, um, how to find storage facilities. This is exactly how we find storage facilities. This is exactly how we find them. So, um, what do I do? Austin, Texas. I was in Austin. And um, we stayed actually in the Hudson Bend area. So here's the lake, right? You see Hudson Bend is right there. That's where we stayed. So here's Lake Travis. So here's all of Austin. All of Austin, all this is all, I mean, it's all saturated right here. Like you don't want to be focusing on this area. This area right here, this would be considered like a primary market. All right. And, um, and basically primary markets are just oversaturated, too expensive, cap rates are super low. Um, you know, it's just not a good place to be buying. It's really not, you know? And so uh, so we wanted to get out into the secondary market, even right here, all the way through here, this would really be considered a primary market. And I, I, would, I wouldn't consider it a primary, I consider it a secondary market, but almost a primary market. So Austin essentially is moving out, right? It's moving outwards, especially over in this area. It's kind of getting more and more full. And you can look at this at any in any type of um, market that you're in, depending on where you're at. This is how you would look at your market, okay? And so when you come into Google Maps, you'll just you'll look you'll look at the market, and obviously you'll see where all these gray areas are. You know that's where like you know the growth is happening. This this is like the primary market. This would probably be considered is considered a primary market as well too. If you see like if you're in any area and you see Cube Smart or public storage or um, let's see Cube Smart public storage extra space that kind of stuff, then most likely it's a primary market, right? Or it's a, a primary to secondary market because most of these like huge big hedge funds and stuff like that, they're not going to, they're definitely not going to go into tertiary markets. All this green, right? This is all tertiary markets, all this green right here. And that's where I focus. That's where I focus on is tertiary markets. Why? Why do I focus on tertiary markets? Because that's what I can afford, right? Because, you know, you know, I'm not like, you know, I don't have lots and lots of money. You know, we are in the process of doing a fund, but um, even that fund, I'm only going to be buying in tertiary, like secondary to tertiary markets. There's so many storage facilities out there anyways. So, um, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter where you buy, you're going to make some money because there's just, there's a lot of great buys and great opportunities for even building as well too, because it's a big spot. On it. So, um, so basically what we did is I just said, okay, well, I know that I want to do bo mostly boat and RV parking, right? So if you look like here's the Austin area and, uh, you know, this is like, I was like, I know there's like a lot of water going like from here all the way up to Lake Buchanan. So this whole area, right? And then there's a huge lake down here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of little tiny lakes, but this is kind of like the main area that we focused on. And so I was like, well, I know we're gonna be focusing on this area. So let me just find some place to stay. And so we stayed in an Airbnb in the Hudson Bend area, which would, I would consider a primary market, mostly this area right over here. This is all primary market. What you could do is uh, just come into Google Maps and, and look up storage in the area. I'm just searching because essentially what's gonna happen when people need storage, what do they do? They just go to Google business listing. And on Google business listings, they um, they just say storage near me. That's what they do. So that's what, this is what's gonna pop. When, they, when, when they're in the area, this is what's gonna pop up. This is how it's gonna look. And this is how Google Maps works. And Google Maps is like the number one, uh, you know, fastest growing search engine in the country. And this is how people find, you know, wherever they wanna go, whatever they wanna do, right? So we stayed here. So obviously like public storage is here, life storage, these are all the big ones. And when you're kind of like, when you're kind of out a little bit on Google maps, like you're gonna see the bigger ones, right? And then you can zone in a little bit more. You could be like, all right, now we're here, right? Now we're in this area. Are there any storage, storage facilities in this area? And you could zoom out and see like if there's anything that comes up that's even more. And you do, you see, you see little tiny ones. These are all the mom and pops. 
These are all the mom and pops. Look at this. And um, so when you zoom in into an area and you look at Google Maps, these ones are gonna come up. This, and these are all basically one owner or like mom and pop shop. We call them mom and pop shops or something like this. And so, uh, and the way that storage works is there's, there's 50,000 storage facilities in the country. And so that means that there's a thousand storage facilities per state, roughly, let's just say roughly. 25% of those or 20 to, let's say 20 to 30% of those are owned by REITs, right? A REIT would be a public storage, a cube smart, life storage, you know, this kind of stuff, extra space storage. That's all, those are all REITs, those are all hedge funds, okay? And um, they're all, you know, uh, you know, they're uh, like 20 to 30 percent in the area, especially in Austin. Austin's more like 30 percent. Some areas is 20 percent, right? You know, in the primary market. So you'll see more of those. And then the rest, the rest are um, owned by like their mom and we call those mom and pop shops. Right. And um, they're just like most of them are, you know, just one owner, some dude that just owns a storage facility. And um, they usually just or have owned one, one storage facility. I would say 80 percent of all the 70 percent out there, 80 percent of those have owned one. 20 percent of that number, they have two, three, four, five plus or whatever. Right. There's very few storage facility owners that own like, you know, a lot of storage facilities, but um, most of them will have one and some will have two or three or something like that. When you, I rarely ever find anybody that has more than like three storage facilities. All right. When you start zooming in to like into Google Maps, then you'll start seeing like you can go and just check these out and you can even in, in some certain areas, you can even zoom in even more now and see if there's any other ones. Now remember, see now as you zoom in even more, you see all these little tiny ones. See, we stayed, stayed over in this area and like this one right here and this one right here, like you drive by those and it's just like, they're just, you know, older storage facilities that are not like, you know, and they're not gonna come up on Google Maps unless you really hone into that area, right? So if you're like in this area and then you're like storage facility near me, that stuff will come up, right? And so the reason I'm showing all this is because this is one of the main ways that we find self-storage is we will, we go to the area and then we actually, we look on Google Maps to see what we can find. And we say, okay, um, obviously we're, we, we stayed in this area and we found several, like here's one, we went to all these storage facilities and just checked them out. And actually, however many storage facilities that you see in an area, right? however many storage facilities that you see on Google Maps, pretty much the same amount of those storage facilities are not on Google Maps, right? And the reason why is because to get on Google Maps is actually quite difficult. I don't know if you guys have ever put a, a business on Google Maps, but um, you can uh, unmute yourself if you have a question. I don't know if you can. Yes. So, yeah. So my question was the boat storage, isn't that a different sort of category than no storage is storage. So people can put their personal and whatever affects their with their boat. But a yeah, boat, 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 like you see here, like this is this one right here. This is like boat and RV storage. And then right here, this is like, this is camper storage. And everybody has different names for it too. But like, gotcha. we, have, we have storage facilities that have storage, like enclosed, like closed control, like, you know, climate controlled or non-climate controlled. And then we, and those same facilities also have like boat and RV storage. You'll see like a store, you'll see storage facilities that are like, you know, that are like enclosed, yeah. in either climate or non, gotcha. and then they'll have like enclosed boat and RV storage, right? and they'll have open boat and RV storage, and then they'll have like, you know, maybe halfway covered, and then they'll have like completely open. Gotcha. You know saying? Mm -hmm. All in the same part. In fact, you'll see a lot of storage facilities that have like, uh, It'll be like, I mean, I've seen storage facilities and especially out in the country, like, you know, a lot of times you won't see that kind of like in this area, 
this is a lot of boat and RV storage. This is, I mean, this is boat and RV storage, but they do have units. These ones have units. And, and the thing is, is you can click on this 